what's going on good people welcome back to another episode of trading my live account today is day number 64 it's september 11 2023 we made some trades today so let's get into it so today i want to really talk about the ways to trade a range that really don't work in the best fashion and i want to talk about that because i've done a video where i talked about the ways to actually trade a range where you can be successful but today was one of those days where I just made the wrong decision. So I want to make an episode where I talk about the wrong things to do when it comes to trading the trading range. So let's actually talk about where the range got established because the range didn't actually expand from the high for the day to the low for the day, not on this specific occasion. So if you look at these blue lines down here towards the bottom of the chart, these represent a zone that was established in the pre-market that price is trading in for a pretty significant amount of time. So it makes sense that when the market comes back and opens at 930 that eventually this zone would play some shape or some type of important role as we went along and that's exactly what happened today so keep that in mind that's the zone that we want to talk about today the trading range that we're looking at so let's go ahead and start the analysis from the open this morning so it's a little bit cut off on the side of the screen we start at 940 but in the prior 10 minutes that led up to that we had a pretty strong move to the upside and then we found our, our high up here around 35,140. Now, from that point forward, we sold off, came back to retest previous higher lows, but we broke down through those and then we just pretty much had a strong move to the downside. Now, throughout this entire down move, I was looking for my setups, but I never really got the short setups that I was looking for. So, you know, I just was patient. I watched the move and I was like, okay, when I get my setup, I'll take it so what i was looking for i was waiting for prices to pull back and retest an area that used to be a previous low the first time that they did that was at point number one where they pulled back to retest the lows for this wick so as soon as i saw them get rejected at that price right here on this red candle and they started to move away that's when i shorted right here now a higher low got formed so as soon as i saw that higher low get formed i was immediately out of the trade and I believe I made the right decision because if I would have held it, it would have eventually came back up to this level of resistance and stopped me out. So that's pretty much the idea that led to trade one right there. But I got out pretty early, so I'm happy about that. So I come back on trade two, realizing that, OK, we came back down to the bottom of the range. We had a very strong move to the upside off of that one off of this one candle right here. And then we had a higher low form. So I'm seeing all of the signs that tell me that the market wants to continue higher. So I wait for prices to come back, retest the the high price for the swing that just happened as we bounced away from the bottom of the range. And once I saw that happen, that's where I went long at trade number two and then just took prices back up to the top of resistance right here. But when I look back at it and I think about it, let's actually read the notes. So I went long here after seeing a higher low form, but I should hold range trades to the extreme of the range. And that's one of the things that you want to do when you actually take a good trade in a range. So if you see prices come back down to the bottom of the range and then you see them start to move up and you have your signals that tell you to get in and you enter, you want to make sure that you hold that trade all the way back up to the extreme of the range. So in this scenario, the extreme that we should be holding for is the top level extreme where we have the uppermost blue line. Now, if I would have held prices to that point right there, I probably would have had another 10 to 15 points worth of profit, which would have really helped me and kind of would have helped to weather some of these losses that I took a little bit later on in the session. So when it comes down to trading the range, always make sure you hold those profit targets until you get to the best possible level. Very important. So once we actually push back up to the top of the range, we break out of it. We didn't really have too many higher lows until we got back up to what used to be a previous zone that was established on the way down a little bit earlier in the market. So once we got back up to this zone, we pushed back up to the top, came back down to the bottom, and then continued moving higher. Now, right here, I was expecting for the uptrend to continue once we broke out of that zone. So I'm expecting for a successful breakout to occur right here at trade number three. But if we read the notes, it says at number three, after today, I will stop buying the previous high. Instead, I wanna stick to my higher low strategy. And the reason I say this is because last week I kind of ran into the same problem also where, you know, I did a little bit of studying and I figured out that if you are not able to catch a higher low where you see prices come back to retest that level, what you can do instead is wait for prices to break above the previous swing high that was established and then go long based off of that previous high. Now, that was something that worked for me 
for about a week or two, but it wasn't something that I've studied long enough to actually feel confident to take that trade whenever I see it. So I kind of want to scratch that from my playbook and then just focus on my higher low strategy. Because when it comes to the higher low strategy, I've seen that work on so many uh, different occasions and so many different times that I believe in it. So I want to stick to the setups that I believe in the most and me buying at the previous high, I just haven't studied it enough to add it to my playbook quite yet. So I still need to do a little bit more research on that before I actually take these trades in live sessions like I've been doing. So that's very important right there. I want to let that go until I'm a little bit more knowledgeable on that subject and that type of trading. Now, once we sold off from trade number three, we pretty much had to move all the way back down. And let's actually talk about that because that was one of the characteristics that we've seen throughout this entire session. It started at the market open where we saw prices pretty much have a very strong swing to the downside. And it only gave you one real pullback right here. I wouldn't say the pullback was this wasn't I wouldn't count this as a, a actual entry to go short from because at this time the trend was still up and we were bouncing off of major levels of support. Now, once we broke back through those levels, we never came back to retest any of these. So, you know, today the market was really more of a continuation type of market where you see which direction the market is moving and you just need to get in and participate. If you're waiting for a pullback, more than likely you won't get it. And if you think this is a pullback, that's probably going to be the reversal. So that was pretty much the characteristics of the market that we saw today. So we saw that earlier. We saw that on the swing back up. We had no higher lows that got retested. We made higher lows. Yes, we had one right here where this candle is right above two. We have one right here. Another one on top of the resistance level here and another one on top of the support level from the green line right here. And then another one once we broke back up into the zone. But none of these higher lows came back to get retested. So we pretty much just see the market just moving up in a continuation basis, not really a pullback basis. So that's interesting, too. Sometimes you'll run into a day like that. And when you look back at the chart, you you see all of the opportunity. But it's really a little bit more deceptive than you would think, because even though you see the market moving, it's all types of swings to the upside and swings to the downside none of my setups really started to form so it might look good on paper but when you really break it down this is not the type of market that i really thrive in and that means that i either need to call it a day or just be patient and wait for my setups to form so that was one thing i wanted to talk about too and that was pretty much some of the characteristics that we saw on the way back down after trade three but notice what happened after we broke back into the zone right here we had this one green candle that came back up to retest the top of the zone. Now, sometimes when you have a really strong trend, you might only get one candle like that. And I wasn't quite sure if I should take that short trade because I'm like, eh, I'm not quite sure if that's the best possible signal to get in. But in a market like this, where it's a continuation type of market, sometimes you might only get that one candle that's going to give you one chance to get in. And if you don't get it, you miss it. So that's what pretty much happened as we came back down into the bottom of the zone. Now, once we get to trade four, this is where things start to get a little bit interesting because we came back to retest the higher low that got formed at point one and we found support right there. But I was thinking along the lines of we weren't able to actually touch the bottom of the zone at the blue line. We got close, but we weren't able to do it. So I was expecting for prices to come back up retest this previous higher low from point number two and then i expected for the market to sell off and come back and retest that level at the bottom of the range but what i've actually learned right here let's read the note so anytime you hit the bottom of a range don't take the first short trade that appears think long instead and i think that's one of the the things that's been a thorn in my side for a while is that you know i'll see the move and i'll see it get close to that level but it won't quite touch it. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, OK, it has to come back and test that level. You know, that's not always the case. Sometimes it can happen like that, but not always. And you don't necessarily want to put real money behind that and expect for that to happen. And that's what I've been learning when it comes to these ranges. So you don't have to have the, the prices come back and really test the exact bottom of the range. Sometimes it can be close enough and close enough is good enough. And that's one of the biggest things I learned on trade four. Now I come back on trade five and I see that this is the level of resistance. I drew that based off of that one green candle that we talked about earlier that came back 
to retest the top of the zone. We got rejected about one or two ticks away from the lows from that green candle, and then we started moving away from it. So I said, okay, cool. We came back up to resistance. We got rejected. Now I want to take the short trade in expectation that prices should come back and retest the bottom of the range, right? Now I took the short trade right there, but it got stopped out for break even after a higher low got formed, which makes sense. You know, I'm not mad at that. So we push higher, push back up to the top of the range once again, but we pull back right here and created a higher low where I have this circle. So I'm thinking that, okay, this is the higher low. Now it's time for me to employ my higher low strategy. But this goes back to what I was talking about at trade number three when I say I want to stop buying the uh, the previous highs because that's just not working for me. Because anytime I don't have a retest of that higher low, I say, okay, if we break past the previous swing high, that's where I'll go long from if we come back to retest that level. But, but today, today just was, was not the day for that to work. And trade six, six was, was another, another uh, was another reason why I want to eliminate any trades where I buy the previous high. I just haven't done enough research to be able to be confident in that type of setup. So I need to get rid of that. And also when it comes to trade six, look at where I went long at. I went long towards the top of the range. Now, no matter how appealing it may be and no matter how appealing it might seem, you never want to go short at the bottom of the range and you never want to go long at the top of the range. And this is what I mean when I say that it'll be very tempting because if you look at what I'm seeing, I saw this one swing low that got established right here then we had another swing high but excuse me another higher low that got established but look at how long it took for that higher low to get made so to me the more time it makes for the higher low and the more the higher lows are spaced apart the stronger that relationship is and the stronger the buyers are in the market because the sellers had all of this time and space to push the market down but when they got here the buyer stepped right back in so to me that's a very strong bullish sign and then we see another higher low get formed after that occurs and then we break above the zone. So at six, I'm saying, okay, I see where the market wants to go. I see the signs that are occurring. Now it's time for me to go long. But you always, always, always have to respect the range that you're trading in. No matter how appealing the signs might be, you gotta avoid the temptation. And that's the biggest lesson I learned right there on trade six. Now trade seven, eh, I definitely was reaching a little bit when I took seven. So let's read the notes. So when prices hit the top of a range and sell off, I need to be short. Longs will be appealing, but I don't need to take those. And that's what I mean when I talk about the, the methods that you want to avoid when it comes to trading the range. You do not want to go long at the top or short at the bottom. And when you see prices hit the top of the range, no matter how appealing it might be, you cannot go long. You know, we can kind of apply the same principles of trading the zone that we can to trading the range. Now, when I trade a zone, one of my biggest rules is to never open a position in the middle of the range or the middle of the zone. So you can also apply that to range bound markets. You don't want to trade from the middle. You want to trade from the extremes. If you're at the bottom of the range, you want to go long. If you're at the top, you want to go short. And that's pretty much all you want to do. And you just want to observe the market in between those two points if that's what's going on. So on trade seven, that was just a reminder of that lesson. You don't want to go long or short in the middle of the zone. And right here, you know, I think it was a, a decent idea. I saw a higher low that got formed earlier, so I expected prices to come back and retest it, which would be a good idea if it was more of a trended market. But because we were in that range, you got to respect the range first and then everything else next. So after trade seven, I hit my loss limit for the day. My account was locked. So I was like, all right, that's cool. You know, I I didn't have my best day today, but I do feel like I learned a, a lot of important lessons. And these lessons could be very helpful for me going forward into the future. So I just want to focus on trading ranges and making sure that no matter what happens, I stay disciplined and I stick to the plan. So that's pretty much the main thing that I learned today. So I hope you guys were able to take something away from that. I'll be back tomorrow somewhere between 9.30 a.m. and 9.40 a.m. on September 12th, ready to run it back again. And tomorrow, I'm going to make some better decisions. So make sure you tune in. But until then, you guys, take it easy.